Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Righteousness. Increase within us your holy grace, so that this sacred ceremony may remind us of the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into earthly Jerusalem, and most of all to serve toward our own sanctification and the eventual entry in your heavenly Jerusalem. We ask all of this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many miracles. If we let him go on, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy our holy place and our nation. And one of them, Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is expedient that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation should not perish. So from that day on they took counsel how to put him to death, as they said, The Romans will come and destroy our holy place and our nation. Let us pray. O God, who disordained that the multitude of Israel's believing people should honor with the tumultuous joy the Savior before his sacred passion, and did inspire the crowd to spread branches of olive leaves and palm in the way, and to sing Hosanna in his praise, grant that these palms, the symbol of victory over evil, and these branches, the symbol of goodness, meekness, and justice, the gifts of the Holy Spirit within our hearts, may go forth to wage incessant war against the forces of evil, depravity, and falsehood, and so guided through life in the way of truth, light, and justice, we may enter into everlasting glory. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the faith of those who put their trust in you, grant that strengthened in their love of you, they may never suffer disappointment. May we bless these branches of palm, and may these branches of palm which we, your servants, bless in your most holy name, remind us of the solemn day in the life of Jesus Christ. Inspire us to turn our eyes heaven 
word to your holy Jerusalem. Dear Lord, we ask that you would bless these branches of palm as you did chose Noah to be the new father of the human race, Moses to be the leader of Israel's people, and Jesus Christ to be the Savior of all. Grant, we beseech you that contemplating the wonderful ways of your providence, we may eventually unite our wills with your holy will in the work of our own sanctification and salvation. We ask all of this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon these palm branches and bless those who are re to receive them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May our prayers rise up to you, O God, as we bless these palms. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with this authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open wide the doors and gates. Lift high the ancient portals. The King of glory enters. Who is the King of glory? He is God, the mighty Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come to us to rich us with your love and mercy. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, for us your wounds were suffered. O Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have given your Son as the Savior of the human race and a model of humility. He fulfilled your Lord, your will, O Lord, by becoming man and giving his life on the cross. Guide our minds by his truth and strengthen our lives by the example of his death that we may live in union with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask all of this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading for today is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, but have turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm today is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 22. The response is, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All those who see me scoff at me, they mock me with parted lips, they wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me, a pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the community, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend. And those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered with a council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many miracles. If we let him go on thus, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the people. The Lord has proclaimed to the ends of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see your salvation comes, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. A reading of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one of you do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream because of him today. The chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, which one of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, his blood be on us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium 
and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry the cross. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. As they placed over his head the written charge against him, this is Jesus the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabathani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened. And the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake. And all that was happening, they said, truly, this was the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Insult has broken my heart and I am weak. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, and I found none. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Blessed are you, Lord of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, may become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands may become our spiritual drink. O Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you this day with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared in the glory of your most holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in the memory of the passion resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
May the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus, make us pleasing to you. Alone we can do nothing, but may this perfect sacrifice win for us your mercy and love. All of this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your Lord hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right so to do. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us. You preserve us from sin and lead us into eternal life. Through our abstinence, you confirm in us your goodness and curb our unbridled vices. And so today, Palm Sunday, as we commemorate the triumphant entry of your Son, Jesus Christ, may we all together with him give unto you glory. Therefore we join with the voices of the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and all your angels, along with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death. And made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. After supper with them, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, 
which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, Paul, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Today we offer special prayers for all those who are suffering because of the coronavirus. Lord, send your rays of the divine physician and heal according to your will. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we might find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are one, 
We who are many are of one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of humanity and divinity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. And may the gifts I have received this day bring me healing and strength now and forever. Amen. Father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O loving Father, you have satisfied our hunger with this sacred banquet. The death of your Son gives us hope and strengthens our faith. May his resurrection give unto us perseverance and lead us unto salvation. We ask all of this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon all of you, and may the grace of God be ever with you. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth this day, Palm Sunday, and give tribute to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Good morning to all of you. Greetings from the holy name of Jesus Parish here in South Deerfield. I thank you for allowing us to come to you on this most special day. And I would like to share with you a few words. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Of the many titles that have been given to our Lord Jesus Christ, I feel that his title, Prince of Peace, is so appropriate for today. Our country, as well as our entire world, is being decimated by the coronavirus. So many families have been touched and affected by this deadly and highly contagious virus that is impartial to no one. The Prince of Peace, our blessed Lord on that first Palm Sunday, entered Jerusalem to be greeted with words of Hosanna by a multitude of people. So many showed him their love and devotion that day by laying palms in his path. According to Holy Scripture, he entered the holy city in humility, sitting on a donkey, a simple beast of burden. Now the very word Hosanna, as found in the Judeo-Christian tradition, is used to express adoration, praise, and joy. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Originally, Hosanna was an, an appeal for deliverance, taken from the Hebrew word Hosea, not, which is translate, translated to, please save us, or please deliver us. In Psalm 118, verse 25, we read, Save us now, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, send us now prosperity. Palms and palm branches have deep symbolical meaning to Jews of today as in ancient times. Palms and other tree branches were and are a part of the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles and were also used by the Maccabeans when they celebrated defeating the Greeks over 2,100 years ago. For Christians, the palm is a symbol of peace. Today, our blessed Lord greets each of us with the words, Peace be unto you. So what is the peace that Jesus brings to us this day? It can be said that Jesus, first of all, brings to our world a peace of tranquility and quietness. For we read in Psalm 123, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall need nothing else. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Jesus brings to us today a peace of deliverance from all the disturbances in our world. It was Jesus who said, Peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world can give, but as I give unto you. 
Today, Jesus brings us a piece of comfort. For he also said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Finally, it can be said that Jesus brings to each of us respite from our own personal trials of which so many know today. For Jesus, in his meekness and gentleness, says, Come to me, all you who are heavenly laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. I think all of us need a moment of peace and tranquility, calm and silence from what is taking place in our world, from all that is taking place in our communities, from all that is taking place in our families, from all that is taking place within ourselves. The blessed palms that many of us will receive today and taken home and shared with others are more than just a simple decoration. It is a reminder of the peace that the Lord brings and offers to each and every single one of us today. It is a symbol that re represents our love and acceptance of him as the Prince of Peace. Just as those gathered in Jerusalem that day welcomed him and laid palms in his path, we also welcome him as our Deliverer, our Savior, into our hearts as the Prince of Peace. A peace that gives us, even but for a moment, tranquility, deliverance, comfort, respite, and hope. And so this day, it is my prayer that we might all find ourselves a moment of that peace that, as St. Paul said and spoke of in the Philippians, a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.